Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the new Pan-Asian cruiser line starting with the tier 4 Chungking. Now with that being said let's get into our commander. We're running Chen Xiaokuan. We have Francesco Mimbelli for our main battery reload time and our Charles Madden for main battery traverse speed and main battery reload time buffs. Okay, We have taken him up to level 14 and given him legendary 2 uh, just so that we get a little bit more uh, out of this build. But we're running beyond range, blind justice. Now this one, I, I don't think you necessarily need to run this, but I personally enjoy it. Uh, you could go with Igniter here, which gives you a plus 3% chance to fire. But personally, these torpedoes are nasty. Um, while you may not get a lot out of them at Tier 4, uh, it, I think later on these torpedoes are going to get pretty god darn disgusting. But uh, cruiser detectability is big, and these things are ridiculously sneaky, okay, for what they are. Also, back in stock, again, re reload time on your torpedoes. For this particular cruiser, I may decide that Velocious or Sponge, probably Sponge would probably be a better idea here, uh, reduces the incoming damage and stuff, and, you know, you're going to get hit, and when you do, it's devastating in these things, so keep that in mind. So, early on, probably not your best pick to go back in stock, because you're not going to get much out of the three torpedoes, most likely, okay? Okay. Um, they are disgusting torpedoes, don't get me wrong. They're very long range, they're under. They're deep water torpedoes, so you can't hit destroyers with them, but battleships and cruisers for sure, and they do a lot of damage, so keep that in mind. Uh, so they're not bad to buff, but I think at tier 4 you're probably better going with Sponge or Velocious, but uh, we were running back in stock, so that's what we're going to go with. And then Smoke on the water, obviously. Later on when you do get a reload booster for your torpedoes, this is probably your better bet. Um, because you get an extra torp reload booster, plus it increase, or decreases your cooldown for the torp reloads boosters. So I think this will probably be better later. But for now, smoke on the water is definitely my choice because we don't have a reload booster, so it doesn't do you any good. So uh, refill station, obviously, for our legendary perk. I don't think we need an extra smoke early on. And so going refill station is just the obvious choice here, at least in my opinion. All right, and let's look at our, our loadout. Now, we are not running Aiming Systems Mod 1. At this at this tier, these cruisers are going to be accurate enough at these shorter ranges that you don't really need aiming systems, okay? So going with main battery traverse speed is actually pretty huge um, because these, tr these turrets are very, very slow. Uh, so getting them to rotate faster is always a good thing, okay? Keeping them on target, especially if you're trying to maneuver in open water and avoid getting hit sort of thing going to come in handy. Uh, but we are fully upgraded, so keep that in mind. Uh, I didn't... Uh, this is only going to be the only only video here for this the one battle that I played in this. I do have a very fun battle for you guys. It's uh, going to showcase the HE and the AP. It's going to be in a carrier game, uh, even though the carrier doesn't really mess with us. But it's going to showcase the strengths and weaknesses of the ship pretty well, which is what I always go for when I do these meet the ships. Um, and we got the the Chung King and the Robmot in the crates from the previous update. So we don't need the XP to get to the next tier. Okay. So for all of that, let's get into the loadout. You can see we do get a smoke screen. So keep that in mind. But uh, we're running the Italian Unity flag because if you hold your tongue just right, it kind of looks like a Spartan helmet, but it's not. Um, and then we're running Type 4 camo for the extra, uh, you know, dispersion coming after you and then you know just being sneaky okay because being sneaky is a good thing but we're not running a permanent camo on a tier four like it's just not going to be a thing i'm not wasting paint for that okay survivability twenty two thousand six hundred hit points so not bad uh artillery you get 152 millimeter 50 caliber bl mark 21s which are pretty modern okay six of them Reloading or reaching out to 14.5 kilometers with this build reloading in 8.3 seconds with this build 180 degree turn time is 20.6 and remember if you don't buff the 180 degree turn time the turret traverse on these things is awful I don't know if it was 25 or 28 seconds to start with but it's freaking terrible so keep that in mind you definitely want to buff the turret traverse on these things 
Um, HE shell maximum damage 2100 with a 9% chance to set fires. AP shell maximum damage of 3100. Secondaries, you get 102mm 45 caliber QF Mark 29s. Uh, they're a dual purpose secondary, and you get eight of them reaching out 4.3 kilometers and have a reload time of three seconds. Uh, HE shell maximum damage is 1500 with a 6% chance to set fires. Okay, torpedoes. You get 533 millimeter TR Mark IV torpedoes. You get six of them, a triple launcher on either side of the ship. They reload at 103.4 seconds. They uh, deal 16,867 damage, which seems like a lot for a tier four torpedo. That's all I'm saying. Like that's kind of crazy damage actually for a tier four. Maybe I'm wrong. Torpedo detectability range by sea is 0.8 kilometers. Remember, these are deep water torpedoes. You ain't gonna see them until it's too late, battleships, so keep that in mind. And they have good range at 10.2 kilometers. And at tier four, they're still doing 61 knots, which is not bad, all right? It's not fast, but it's not slow either. AA defense, it does have a little bit of AA. Uh, it has a 43 defense rating. You know, 43 is my number, so, you know, yay. But when you're talking about AA defense, the bigger the better. 20 millimeter Orlick and Mark IVs, you get two of them reaching out to two kilometers, dealing seven damage per second. 20 millimeter Orlick and Mark Vs, you get six of them doing 18 damage per second, reaching out to two kilometers. 40 millimeter Vickers two pounders, you get eight of them reaching out to 40 millimeters. Eight of them reaching out to 40 millimeters. Eight of them doing 28 damage per second, reaching out to two and a half kilometers. And then the 102 millimeter 45 caliber QF Mark 29 dual purpose secondaries, you get eight of doing 38 damage per second, reaching out to five kilometers. I have a question, Wargaming. If these are dual purpose guns, why are they able to, to fire further when they are in AA mode. Why do the shells, like, is there a reason? Is the shells lighter when they're firing flak than they are normally firing the AG? Because here, they can only reach out to 4.3 kilometers. But here, they're reaching out to 5 kilometers. Now, if there's a reason, please let me know. Maybe the, maybe the flak shells are lighter so they can fly further. Who knows? Maneuverability. You get 32.3 knots of maximum speed with a 570 meter turning circle and a 6.4 second rudder shift. So not terrible. Concealment is crazy. 9.6 kilometers by sea, 6.4 by air. Two is always guaranteed. 5.5 kilometer smoke firing penalty. Now, armor, you don't have much. Okay, you get 20 millimeters at the bow. I don't have a calculator on me right away. Actually, I do. I, I lied. I can look it up on my computer real quick. So if we take 20 and multiply that by 14.3 to find out the overmatch, that means 286 millimeter guns is what it takes to overmatch your bow. So basically anything battleship and up, cruisers cannot overmatch your bow, which is more than some cruisers get at the uh, tier. So keep that in mind. So uh, this thing doesn't even get overmatched by the 8 inch guns that you get on the, uh, you know, furry taco and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. So that's very nice. But anything battleship caliber is going to go straight through. And you do have a little bit of 70 millimeter armor plating on the side here, but I wouldn't count on it. And I'll, I'll show you why you don't want to count on it. Okay. Let's get rid of the, uh, and to prove it, like here's the 70 millimeter. You can see it right there. So it is a 70 millimeter armor plate over the top of your Citadel, but your citadel is above the waterline, and you have enough small armor on the sides that any battleship caliber shells you can't angle against. And if they pin you at this sort of angle, you can see that giant superstructure begging for it. Now, I say giant superstructure. It's giant this way for a cruiser. This way, it's actually very small. Albeit, it is above the waterline, and it will catch a lot of people off guard because... You usually aim for a citadel shot between the turrets, right? Anything between the turrets, waterline is usually a citadel. But these are actually not. They don't extend to the front guns. They don't extend to the rear gun. It is solely underneath the smokestacks to the rear tower. So if you're looking at these, these Pan-Asian cruisers, I, I don't know about the higher tier ones yet, but at least at these lower tiers, 
It's got a further back citadel than you would expect, battleships, so aim further back, okay? But anyway, it is a raised citadel. If you get pinned, you're probably going to get exploded, okay? So, uh, and that's a theme that does carry forward throughout. I've dev struck many of these things in a battleship, so keep that in mind. Overview. Hidden. Good concealment means the ship can get closer to enemies before being detected. Deep water torpedoes are harder to spot but cannot hit destroyers. Sluggish shot. Difficult to aim at long distances. I haven't noticed that at all. These actually seem to have decent shell or shell, shell velocities. Uh, we're going to showcase that a little bit in, a, in the video. But, uh, but because they do have a decent firing arc, you can sit behind islands and, and lob shells pretty effectively. So when you get a chance, they're pretty nice. Uh, so keep that in mind. Chungking, a light cruiser built in Britain designed for combat operations within squadrons and for hunting down enemy destroyers. In 1948, she was transferred to the east. She entered service in 1937, and there were four ships in the series. So let's take a look at her. She's a relatively modern-looking cruiser, so keep that in mind. Now, the one thing I didn't mention, these things don't have sonar, so keep that in mind. Remember, Smoke screens are torp magnets, okay? If you're sitting in your smoke screen, be expecting of torpedoes. They will be a thing. So definitely consider that, all right? And with all of that being said, I mean, she's not a bad looking boat and it's actually surprisingly fun so far. So I may have accidentally discounted this line a little bit more than I should have. Uh, and I'm kind of looking forward to playing the rest of it. And with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on ocean, but we're not actually on ocean at all. We're on hotspot because the game, you know, tells you things. Anyway, you, before we get into this game, don't forget we are on the path to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're new to the channel and you enjoy what I do, make sure you punch that subscribe button. Be a part of our journey for 50,000 subscribers. Let's be the first Legends channel to hit 50,000 subscribers. All right. And with all of that, Let's get into the battle. Now, again, this is not a barn burner game. This is a great game to showcase the strengths and the weaknesses of this particular ship. And uh, that's why I chose it. So we're going to jump straight in. We're going to charge right into the B cap that's right in front of us. And at tier four, I tend to be kind of reckless. All right. Because you can get away with a lot. Most people at these lower tiers don't know what they're doing. I know. Shock. It's like that's what they're, you know, you know, the low tiers are for, is to teach people how to play the game, right? Um, but we're going to go ahead and go for a little area denial here. Uh, you never know. You throw these torps out there. By the time they get there, maybe you catch somebody off guard, okay? Uh, but we're going to push forward. We're going to try to get into a good position. And then you're going to see pretty early on, while we are the first one into the cap, the, the, in, the enemy ends up uh, contesting it pretty quickly, which means we're going to have a little bit of a turkey shoot on our hands. There's a lot of cruisers in this match, uh, so there's not a lot of damage to be had here. You don't get to farm battleships for the entire time. Uh, if I wanted to, I probably could have played around and got a better, uh, better game for damage, but damage doesn't tell you everything. Here we have a beautiful looking angle on an Omaha, which anybody that knows what they're talking about knows that this is just, you don't do this in an Omaha. He's got no camo. This guy clearly is new to the game, doesn't know what he's doing. Broadside in an Omaha, this is begging to die. We take a shot, first shot of AP, first Citadel. Uh, Phoenix, here you're going to see a little bit of that uh, overleading that I was talking about. So these shells are actually decent velocity, or at least they feel that way. So we over overlead the Phoenix. Uh, he's going to start to re reverse as well, and so our next shot is going to be our best shot on the Phoenix, and I think it's actually a kill as well. Now, we fire our guns, and you can see the Danae has actually pushed up into our limit. We did get three full citadels in that, so three shells hit the target, all three of them citadels. We take a shot at the Omaha as well, as he's starting to reverse. The Danae gets blapped and then decides to go broadside he's probably launching torpedoes you've got to anticipate this stuff when you don't have sonar right so we are already moving forward preparing to turn but we want to get all of our guns to bear we finish him off with another double citadel and of course there are the torpedoes right we knew that was going to be a thing plan ahead when you're in these ships that don't have sonar you got to plan ahead omaha begging for it here 
Uh, I believe Omaha has like a 16 millimeter bow, so it probably gets overmatched. I know it gets overmatched by uh, eight inch guns, but I think it actually gets overmatched by us too, potentially. I could be wrong. I think it, maybe it is just eight inch guns and above. But here you can see Wyoming out in the distance. Isokazi is hiding behind an island in a smoke screen, so he's not a threat to us at the moment. But uh, we are spotted by the Wy or by the planes for the Wyoming, which is terrifying because the last thing we want is to get into trouble. Uh, we've gotten one fire this entire game so far. Uh, we haven't really been shooting HE, haven't needed to. But now that we're up against the Wyoming, it's time to start lobbing some HE. Now we go dark here, and I actually didn't see these shells incoming from the Wyoming, really. Uh, he did actually take a shot at us, and they land all around us, thank goodness. Uh, but you can see as we're trying to farm him, we're actually pinning him with the AG as well. Uh, well, some of it. Uh, so we're trying to get our, our lead down. Again, this is my very first game in this ship. But I liked, I liked this game in terms of uh, how it like played out. So it ended up being a really good showcase of the ship. Now you can see I don't have my, uh, my smoke available. Uh, we're 15 seconds out. And here I make a huge mistake by pulling out broadside in front of a Wyoming. I deserve to die for this. And you can see that angle that I was just talking about. Bonk! Now, he actually did not citadel us. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Like, there's a chance that he doesn't citadel us. We get a double fire on the Wyoming as well. He's going to end up damage conning that. And uh, we're going to actually run out of time to shoot him because he's going to get behind the island. Now, I should be in reverse here. And you can see I'm struggling to get the ship into reverse. I think because this thing is built in, uh, built in Britain... There's a chance that this thing has the built-in, like, um, engine uh, propulsion mod. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just a thought. It's just a feel. These things feel very British in terms of their ability to change direction. At least this particular ship does. So that's what I'm talking about. That uh, If you've ever played British light cruisers, you know what I'm talking about. Where they don't like to stop, but they are very good to get moving. Like, they, they'll, they'll go from a stop to moving very nice because they have, like, propulsion mod built in. And I don't know if that's the case for this particular ship or not. But uh, we take some shots over the mountain, and you can see some of that uh, shell um, arc that I've been talking about. We're landing shells on the Svetlana at a distance, and we're actually going to get the kill, and this is going to be our third kill. And again, this is not the craziest game ever. Like, this was just a fun game to showcase the strengths and the weakness. We got blapped, we got to use our smoke, we got to fire over the top of islands, we got to use the HE, we got to use the AP. Uh, this was just a perfect showcase of the ship. So that's what I look for in these Mithas. Um, now, if we go back and do a Path 2 series later on for these uh, Pan-Asian cruisers, then we'll get for we'll look for better games. But for now, to just showcase the ship, this is what we look for. Just the good, the good games to showcase the strengths and the weaknesses of the ship. Uh, while we didn't get a chance to use the uh, torpedoes particularly well, uh, we are going to get to absolutely, uh, you know, showcase the HE and the AP against battleships and cruisers. Uh, Jasano goes down. The last thing that's alive is the carrier. He's all the way in the back of the map. I'm not going to make you guys sit and watch while, while we try to, like, get close to this guy because we're not actually going to get a chance to shoot him. So let's go ahead and speed up time, and I'll see you guys at the end. But you guys will have to let me know what you guys think about these Pan-Asian cruisers. I'm sure there's a lot of you who have already been playing them, but, you know, this is my first attempt to try to play these ships. And so far, I'm enjoying them. I really am. Uh, if this is what I get to look forward to, like, decent handling ships like this all the way through the line, like, this is not going to be a painful grind at all. In fact, this is going to be right up my alley. Uh, but we'll see. Only time will tell, right? But 40,930 damage, not a barn burner game, but we get second on the team. 1,500 base XP with three kills, a solid showcase of the ship. Let me know what you guys think about these, and if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.